let me begin uh, by saying that the last conversation I had with David Cameron was before the, well, I guess it was the last one, but a recent conversation was before the match between the United States and England at the World Cup. Uh, and uh, since it ended in a tie, uh, we are exchanging uh, and paying off our debts at the same time. Uh, this is Goose Island 312 beer from my hometown of Chicago. And uh, David, I understand this, this is... This is Hobgoblin from the Witchwood Brewery in Whitney in my kitchen. And so uh, I advised him that in America, we drink our beer cold. So he has to put this in the refrigerator before, uh, before he drinks it, but I think he will find it uh, outstanding. And uh, I'm happy to give that a shot, although I will not drink it more. It's 5.2%. You, um, you can have it cold. It's all right. All right. But, um, but I think you like it. Yeah. <laughs> now, uh, I, I want to uh, I want to say that all of us in the United States deeply value the special relationship between the United States and the United Kingdom, uh, and we have been uh, very impressed with the leadership that uh, David Cameron has shown thus far. Uh, he has. I think taking a series of steps on some very tough issues uh, and uh, clearly is uh, prepared to uh, make difficult decisions uh, on behalf of his vision for uh, his country. Uh, we already, I think, have established uh, a strong working relationship as of our teams, uh, and we are confident uh, that that special relationship is only going to get stronger uh, in the months and years to come. We had uh, an excellent conversation building, on off, uh, building off of the conversations that we've had at the G8 uh, about the world economy uh, and the importance of our two countries focusing both on the issues of growth, uh, but also on the issues of financial consolidation, uh, that we have long-term debts that have to be dealt with and we uh, have to uh, address them. Uh, there are going to be differentiated responses between the two countries. Uh, because of our different positions, but we are aiming at the same direction, which is long-term sustainable growth that puts people to work. Uh, at the same time, uh, we had uh, an extensive discussion about Afghanistan, and uh, the alignment between our two countries and recognizing we have a serious threat to our safety and security that has to be addressed in this region, uh, that we recognize the enormous sacrifices that both British troops and U.S. troops have been making uh, for some time now, but we are convinced that we have the right strategy uh, to provide the time and the space for the Afghan government to build that capacity over the next uh, uh, several months and years, and this uh, period that we're in right now uh, is going to be critical both on the political front and on the military front, and there's going to be extremely close consultation between our two countries so that we can create a situation in which Afghanistan and Pakistan are able to maintain their effective security and those areas are not able to be used as launching pads for attacks uh, against uh, our people. Uh, we also discussed Iran, and I thanked David for uh, his uh, stalwart uh, support of the United Nations Security Resolution 1929, uh, the toughest uh, sanctions that have been imposed on the Iranian government. Uh, through the United Nations Security Council. Uh, we now have to make sure that we follow up in terms of implementation. Uh, and that was uh, a major uh, discussion point. Um, and uh, the, the key conclusion that we came out of uh, uh, this last day of conversations, and I suspect this will continue uh, through the evening and tomorrow, uh, is that on foreign policy issues, uh, the United States and the United Kingdom are not only aligned in theory, but aligned in fact. Uh, that uh, we see the world in a similar way. We continue to share the same concerns uh, and also see the same strategic possibilities. Uh, and so uh, I think this partnership uh, is <coughs> built on a rock solid foundation and is only going to get stronger uh, in the years. So thank you. And I think that may have been my phone going off. Thank you.
from there it wasn't much. Well, thank you, thank you very much for that, and thank you for what you said about the relationship between our two countries, which I believe is incredibly strong, as you say, I think can get stronger in the, in the years ahead. Uh, we've had some very good conversations at the G8, G8 and a very good meeting here today. Um, I think particularly on the issue of Afghanistan, which is the number one foreign policy and security policy priority for my government, uh, making progress this year, putting everything we have into getting it right this year uh, is vitally important, and uh, we've had very good conversations on that. Uh, and as you said, um, Barack, on all the issues we discussed over the the weekend so far, the Middle East peace process, Iran, um, how we take those forward, uh, and the key relationships that we have um, in the Gulf and elsewhere. We've, we have a very close alignment, and I think we can work together, um, and we want to support uh, the work that's being done. Uh, on the economy, um, you, 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 you rightly say, we have a, a big deficit problem which we have to address. But of course, we want to do it in a way uh, that encourages growth, and that's why we're focusing on um, spending reductions rather than on on big tax increases, and I think that's the right approach to take. Um, and as we go into the G20, I think we can uh, explain that we're aiming at the same target, which is world growth and stability. But it means those countries that have big deficit problems like ours, like ours have, to take, uh, have to take action in order to keep that level of confidence in the economy, which is absolutely vital to growth, to make sure it's there. But uh, it's been great to have this opportunity in the meeting. Um, and the discussions we had at the G8 and the G20, and thank you also for the lift between the two. It was, uh, you threatened to send me a bill, but as I said, um, time is very tight in the UK, so uh, I think we'll have to take that as a free lift. He was a model passenger. 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 He was a model passenger.